What's going on everybody, it's your boy BC Views and today we're gonna be talking about the Sony FX3. Now I've had this camera for a good two, almost three weeks and I really wanted to run it through its paces to know if I really like the camera. Now I know a lot of you may be thinking, how are you not gonna like the FX3? Well, for one, I'm a Canon shooter. I've always used a Canon where going into the Sony world, it's totally new to me. Secondly, I've always had APS-C moving up to full frame. So this review is going to be very general and on the surface. I wanted it to be relatable to experienced camera users and new camera users alike. Things that we can all relate to initially when we first pick up our camera or our newest camera. Before we get started, just putting it out there, this is obviously not sponsored. I got this camera with my own funds. You would know that if you saw my last video. I'll shoot a link up so you guys can check that out if you want. But without further ado, let's get into it. The grip of this camera, in my opinion, the shape, the size, the texture, it's perfect. And I'm not just saying that because this is the FX3. In my opinion, when you wrap your fingers around this grip, they fall in the right places. And it just, it just feels right. There's nothing worse than buying into a camera and later on finding out you don't like the way it feels. Now, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, this was the main influential factor as to why I got the FX3 over the A7S III. For those of you that don't know, these two cameras are essentially the same. When it comes to hardware, what's inside the camera, they're the same. Outside of the camera, totally different but the button placement, ease of use, being able to record, switch over my shutter speed, uh, my aperture, my ISO, without thinking about it, because of the button layout, because of where they're placed, it won me over. Autofocus on this camera is undeniably the best in the game right now. Canon was the king of autofocus, and they still have great autofocus, but in my opinion, Sony's done a spectacular job of not only catching up to the competition, but putting one or two steps ahead. The left and right eye tracking that it has, I've tried to lose this camera, it ain't happening. You can also change the transition speed for this camera, how fast it locks on from one object to another. It's all around just a great system and pretty impressive. The zoom rocker on this camera was a really unique touch that I liked about it. With the zoom rocker, you have the ability to zoom in at 1.5 times the focal length that you're originally at. So if you got a 16 millimeter lens and you want to punch in at 1.5 times crop, well, that's 24 millimeters. Problem solved. But the only bad thing, I wouldn't call it bad necessarily, is you lose that supreme autofocus ability. I don't know if it just disables it, probably, but I noticed when you punch in, the eye focus goes away. But it still focuses, and I didn't see any problems with it. I loved it. The image is still nice and clean, and it just, it, it works. It works great. Picture profiles. The FX3 has 11 picture profiles. I'm not gonna go through them all, but for those of you that like that dynamic range and like to uh, color edit your images, you got a lot to choose from, especially those that like S-Log3 and the most talked about right now, S-Cinetone. The screen, flippy screen. Everybody likes a flippy screen. Thank you, Sony, for listening to your consumers. We've been begging for a flippy screen. The A7S III, FX3 has a flippy screen. It's not fancy but gets the job done gets the job done no complaints there okay let's keep this 100 and let's get to some of the bad things i'm sorry but nothing's perfect in this world the weight the weight of this camera took me by surprise now mind you i'm used to the canon m50 that's aps-c camera in aps-c world everything is smaller this camera's full frame. This is my first full frame camera. So I'm not used to full frame cameras. I'm not used to the weight. I'm not used to the size. Yes, the weight took me by surprise. Smack a lens on this thing. It's heavy. You might sweat, but 
it's something to consider. It's not a deal breaker. You'll get used to it, I promise. But yeah, kind of annoying. Codex and color. I didn't even know what a codec was till I ventured into Sony I am. To keep it simple, codec is pretty much the quality of the image of the video that you're taking. Now, if you're just walking around shooting YouTube videos, you may use a codec, I don't know, XAVC-S, where if someone's hiring you to do a wedding, you might wanna punch that quality up to XAVC-SI. There's actually two more that I'm missing, but understand that with these codecs, it's a lot of information that your laptop or your desktop is, desktop, your desktop is gonna have to process. Something to be aware of, nothing to panic about, but something to understand and know. Colors. Colors kind of work hand in hand with codecs when it comes to processing information. You see a lot of cameras, maybe three or four years ago, they worked off of 4208 bit, where now a lot of cameras have 4220 10 bit. A lot of color information is being processed in these cameras and when you dump them into the softwares, these editing softwares, it's a struggle for them. So just make sure you got an up-to-date laptop desktop and it can handle all that information because it needs to process it. My desktop, for example, I've never heard the fan come on. I use the FX3, go outside, record maybe 15, 20 minutes, that fan's on. It's working. So just keep it in mind. Okay, so we touched on codecs. We touched on color information, 420. 842210. You knew where this was going. Storage. I would recommend a terabyte at least. Now, shame on me. When I get done recording, I delete my footage and I only keep the pieces that I feel like I may reuse again, but after a week, I let that go because I don't have an external hard drive. Now, to save storage or to get more storage, Get you an external hard drive, run the program off of the hard drive so you'll have space. With all this extra information being processed, your storage is going to get ate up. And the only way to save it is to either move it over into an external hard drive or delete it. I'm sorry, this is the sacrifice you have to make. It's gonna suck, it sucks for all of us. But the good thing is external hard drives aren't that expensive. You can find some really good ones for around 100, 200, 300 bucks. And if you're really looking to save or get a lot of storage, obviously it's gonna be higher, but there's external hard drives out there that have 10 terabytes, 15 terabytes. You're gonna pay for it, but you never have to worry about storage again. SD cards, this is the one. This is the one that's gonna make you wanna fight somebody. Now you don't have to get a super expensive SD card. I do, I will tell you, V90 is probably the best, although still in the expensive range for an SD card. This camera will work fine with V60s. Just understand you're not gonna be able to reach in all the features. Plenty of videos on that, I ain't going into it. It's too much for my brain, too much. Now me, I have a Sony Tough V90 card. I soon plan on getting a CF Express card type A, which will allow me to access all the features on this camera, where this card only allows me everything except maybe for two things, which isn't super, 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 super important to me and I don't think it'll be for anything that I plan on doing for future clients. So I hope that information was useful to you guys. Again, I just wanted to keep it simple on the surface, nothing too deep or technical about it. I think the big question is if you do not have an A7S III right now or an FX3, which one is best for you? If you're more of a video person, maybe the FX3 is better than the A7S III for you. Then again, if you're more on the photography side, the A7S III might suit you better. But hey, do your research, look into the information. Either way you go, I think you're gonna be very pleased. So again, thank you all for coming by. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, God bless.